Hello all and good afternoon to all of you. So I'm Shema Salome and I was a CFA wildlife hospital. No, I'm not a veterinarian and yet there is a wildlife hospital in Bengaluru. So my journey with CFA began about 10 years ago where my friend introduced me to this organization and I was associated with them as a volunteer. Years later, after completing my post-graduation, I landed a job with them and today I manage the communication team there. So let me tell you quickly what CFA Wildlife Hospital does. We are a non-profit organization that works 365 days, 24 hours. We have a team of trained rescuers who rescue injured, orphaned, displaced wildlife across the city. We also have a team of veterinarians who provide clinical care to these animals. We also have rehabilitators who help these injured animals regrow so that ultimately we can release them back to the wild. As of September 2019, PFA has rescued 25,505 animals across 200 species. But wait, what is urban wildlife and what kind of animals are you know, in the category of urban wildlife. So simply put, urban wildlife, urban wildlife is the wildlife that live in cities. And pretty much all the birds that you see, the snakes, the monkeys, the bats, the squirrels, all of these come under the category of urban wildlife. So now that we've understood what is urban wildlife, did you know that these animals play a huge role in saving our city? I'll tell you now. Wetlands. So wetlands are important for pretty much any city to sustain. Take example of the biggest cities in the world. New York, Mumbai, Chennai, New Delhi, Paris. All of them have either rivers running through them or they have a sea right next to them. So what do wetlands do? They do numerous things. But to state a few, they help control soil erosion. They reach out to the water, they purify the water, and most importantly, they are habitat of rich biodiversity. So, 4% of our total rescues are species that belong to rescue. But I told you that we rescue 25,000 animals. Why is it that it's just 4%? Here's why it's because of the number of lakes that are dwindling every year. Just two decades ago, Bangalore had close to 3,000 lakes and today I'm afraid we don't have more than 150 lakes. We've lost a lot of lakes due to encroachment and pollution. And companies today do realize the importance of lakes. A lot of them have even taken up projects to revive lakes. But unfortunately, some of them do it without proper planning. What is the first step they take in cleaning up? Uh, a lake, they wipe out all the biodiversity that lives in and around lakes. If you were to visit any lake that is healthy, you will realize and you will actually notice a lot of species that live in and around these lakes. So let me tell you a quick story. There was a castle and a river ran by it. Around this river lived a lot of frogs. And what did these frogs do? They would croak in the night. And the noise of these frogs croaking disturbed the princess's sleep. The king wanted an immediate resolution and he said, I am going to order for all these frogs to be killed. What happened? All the frogs were killed. Eventually, there was a drastic rise in the number of mosquitoes in that area and everybody living in that area died. So clearly, a lot of smaller species that we tend to ignore play a huge role in controlling diseases. And I'm very sure each of us knows someone or the other who has been affected by diseases like dengue, malaria, and we clearly need these species. We need to save them. What else spread diseases? Rats. And we have plenty of them. Did you know in one breeding season or two, a family of rats can produce up to 3,000 rats? Imagine how many rats can they give birth to in one lifetime. That's a lot and that's unimaginable. And each of us also 
notice a few rats lingering between restaurants and I don't know, maybe in your backyards. But you don't see hundreds of them. Why? It's all because of the snakes and the owls that live in your neighborhood. These animals target the rats and are controlling the rat population in your neighborhood. Had you not had owls living in your neighborhood, had you not had snakes living in your neighborhood, trust me, you wouldn't be living in your neighborhood either. What is it? What is the city? Garbage. What is the part of the garbage? Decomposing organic waste. So you see a lot of carcasses everywhere. You see dead rats. And a lot of our meat vendors are guilty of disposing meat improperly. So what happens? These tend to spread diseases. And who's controlling them? We have to thank our scavengers like the kites and the crows that are eating up these uh, decomposing uh, organic waste of our city. Especially kites. Uh, a lot of these diseased rats that are out on the run, they target, kites target these slow moving rats and eat them first. So look at the amount of health they're doing us, look at the amount of diseases that they are saving us from. 65% is the majority of PFA's rescues are species that belong to pests and disease control. Next, what, what is also important? Pollination and pollinators. Without pollinators, uh, I don't know, there will be no weeds in the city and plants and animals depend on these pollinators uh, and all these pollinators also depend on these green plants and trees to live. So without them, uh, just imagine in Bangalore we already are, we have so much pollution and we can't breathe green air. But if you walk into a Lalba or a Kabimba, you can immediately feel the difference in the air quality that you breathe. And imagine not having, you know, a Lalba or a Kabimba. It would be almost pretty much ridiculous. 26% of TFA's rescues belong to the pollinator species. Yeah. So what's threatening the wildlife of our city? We've understood that they play a huge role, but a lot of these species are threatened. We put together a cross-section of species to understand their primary cause of rescue. And we saw various uh, reasons. They were injured, they were displaced, they were orphaned, they had suffered trauma and shock. And what do all of these causes point towards? You can clearly say the one root cause is urbanization. Urbanization increases animal-human conflict. So what is it that you can do? What is it that we can do? Um, clearly, you understood how important these animals are and trust me, I've covered very few species and the help that they do to uh, sustain our ecology. Uh, and also, yes, there are a few wildlife hospitals like us in the city that work towards saving these animals. But it is the responsible of each and every one of us here to save the wildlife of the city. As an individual, you can as an individual, you can do a lot of things. You can make the right eco-friendly choices. You can stop the use of plastics. You can put up pails of water for the animals that live around you, especially during summer, because a lot of birds and smaller animals die out of dehydration. You can also spread awareness amongst your friends and family. And lastly, you can be a hero. You can call us and help an animal with me. Thank you.